a really good question, so I, I want to read it first. Hi, David and Francis. So, with giving up the world and letting go of false responsibility, how do you know when you are avoiding love and responsibility, and using this truth to face to not face what is given? And how does this link with Ken Wapnick's teaching, as well as Arden and Persia, of just being normal and doing your forgiveness work? So, this actually, I have someone asked me this question not so long ago. She、um, is going through a divorce right now, and when we know, when you actually take the step to leave a very familiar construct. Or life and very comfortable.、Uh, she was going through a lot of emotion, and she said, "You know, with、uh, the mind training that you have done、um, for all these years, I wonder whether you could just do the forgiveness in without having to to、uh, divorce and in your own in your own family." I felt like when she first said that, I, my mind short wired like. It, it feels like I couldn't understand the question. Like a short circuit. Short circuit. <laughs> short circuit is like, it's it's like, what? How how could that how could that be? I do, I don't understand the question. And then in the end, after this short circuit went on for a few few、um, seconds, I said, but 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 that that will be done. It all comes down to. You should be able to forgive. In this circumstance, if you had the mind training, without having to go through these steps, and 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 I, I found it was really interesting because my mind could not comprehend that hypothetical scenario. And all that I had in mind was, but Thy will be done. How how can that be that I do not follow the script and the will of God? And achieve forgiveness. It was completely incomprehensible in my mind. So I was just like, "Keep." That's the only thing that that shows up. And I feel that is why it is a very good question to point in the guidance retreat because that is true. You know, normal is what what ego、um, basically construct the world. Normal situation and constructs separated. Certain people you have a relationship with, most of the people you don't have a relationship, and you need to fulfill responsibilities according to those people. These are the responsibilities, and the rest of your identity with God, your peace of mind, they're not your responsibility. Your responsibility is in this world. So that is a total different set of responsibilities that we were taught. So yeah, I was just th thinking, how you know, this is such a beautiful question because I I remember when I was, I heard the big、uh, voice first of all came from the sky when I actually just asked that question, what was I to do? And the voice said, just wait here in Australia. For something about to happen in your life, I waited for five years. When David came, and I was feeling this calling to leave my life and come over, but in my mind and also in my perceptual world, all the reflection was selfish, selfish, selfish. What about us? We love you. You love us. Why can't you do the work? In this construct, why can't you do this in the family? Why can't you love us? Why can't you extend <laughs> your love to us? What about us? You love everybody else. <laughs> so that was what I was facing, and I had to really—I mean, I really thought about it in my mind. I thought, okay, let me really get this question clear. Why did I have? Why do I have to go? And I thought, you know, I do love my mom. I love my ex-husband a lot. I want to be with them, if I can. So let me just jump ten years of my life and think, what state of mind would I be in? I thought I would be resentful. 
I would be projecting. I would say, I stayed because of you. I sacrificed for you. I hope you're happy now. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, that's not love. Even I knew that's not responsible. That's not loving. And I cannot equate that with love. Even in my untrained mind, I knew that. I thought if I want to be loving, I need to be inspired. I need to be grateful. And I had no idea. Only God know how I can turn from a bored state of mind, uninspired and resentful state of mind to have a total turn. So since I don't know, my life is yours, God, lead me to that state of mind. And when I left, I knew I left for love. I knew that for a fact. I left for love, for a love that I could tap into so that I can e extend to them whenever I think of them. That's why I was saying to say that I love someone is better in this world to say I forgive you because I need to learn forgiveness first and foremost in order to tap into that love. But I think that is a good question just because it also comes back to what is our responsibility and what is a normal life situation. Why can't we do that? Yeah, yeah you know, I think there, there were, when I was reading the Course and I was going, reading the I Need Do Nothing section, I could feel this huge energy starting in my chest. Like these, this huge vibration and this vast energy. And, and I could, it was like Jesus saying, pay attention. And I'm like, but this is the I Need, I need Do Nothing section of the Course. And in a book that has instructions and a workbook and everything, and I'm going, Ooh, what's this, what's this huge fluttering and energy going on in my chest with I need do nothing? And then it came back again in Lesson 189 in the workbook. Simply do this, be still, lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past is taught, what one belief from anything you learned before. Forget this world, forget this course, forget Ken Wapnick, forget David, forget everything, forget everything. Can you hear this? Forget everything and come with open arms unto your God. Jesus never says be normal. What did Jesus say 2,000 years ago? Be passers-by. He said judge not, be passers-by. If he puts a word after be, and usually he doesn't, he, if, you, if you want, I mean Shakespeare I think had it, to be or not to be, that is the question. The question isn't about being normal. The question is to be or not to be. Jesus says in the Course, we say God is and then we cease to speak. He, he says, now we shall go beyond the words. Actually, all interpretations of what Francis just said of this normal, I have, you know, Jesus is saying, what you believe normal to be is inside of time and space, you know. And, and I am calling you out of the world. I'm calling you out of that crystal ball. You don't think you're going to find any answers inside there. In fact, I, I, one time I went to the dictionary and, and to thar, thesaurus and tried to look up normal and, and one of the synonyms for normal is average. Do you think the Christ is average? Do you think the light is average? Do you think before Abraham was, I am, is average? The average is, is in mathematical terms, it's a statistical Balancing, it's a statistical word actually, average. If you look at, at what is average, it's, it, you have to divide all of the false beliefs, whether you call them numbers or people or things or circumstances, and you divide them equally and you come up with a number and that's the average. And in the world, that's what it is. Now what could Artin and Persa or Ken have been talking about except this? The Gospel of Thomas, Jesus says, the Kingdom of Heaven is within you, the Kingdom of Heaven is all around you. The Kingdom of Heaven is everywhere. So the only meaningful thing we can take from this normal word is 
right in what seems to be the here and now, can you forgive, can you so completely overlook the form, but be right there in a world of appearances where the body's eyes continue to report differences, but in your mind you just have this soft, calm, loving feeling that it's all the same. All the forms are the same. There's no better forms or worse forms. There's no hierarchy of forms. If you can see the sameness in what you perceive, everything. That's why the Course uses relationships, because he's saying, like, okay, here seems to be the appearance of, we'll call them, two people. And, and that's called a relationship. I guess you could call it a relationship. The ego thinks it's a relationship. The ego made it to be a relationship, these two forms. And if, but we know falling in love, we know reaching that place of judge not, we, we know reaching that be passers-by, even with the context of what seems to be physicality, Jesus is saying, I am there with you because I am a state of mind, I am an attitude, I am love, and even with the form of what seems to be in front of you, you can, you can be in peace. Because you don't make any interpretations of what that means. Because the Holy Spirit sees the light beyond the appearances, sees the light of the blazing light of, of the great rays, and these forms will never be able to contain you, they will never be able to ac accurately even represent who you are. But if you can let go of every th thought you have of these forms, and every belief you hold, you can meet in this moment for the very first time. But be normal is actually one of the greatest defenses that the ego came up with to defend against the holy instant. It's one of the, it's this ultimate weapon at stay in time and space. Miracles transcend time and space. Miracles are so, they show you the false is false, they show you the vastness, they show you that your will is universal and can never be content with form of any kind. Be normal, used by the ego, is, is saying that the world is your classroom. And I'm here to tell you right now, the world is not. These situations, family, classroom, interpersonal classroom, all this classroom is phony baloney. The mind is the classroom. The mind is the place where the awakening occurs and you have to bring every single thing back to mind. And that's always the lesson. The lesson, what seems to be art and persa, seem to be a relationship between a man and a woman, and then enlightenment would have to be, be passers-by with that concept too. Because the truth is not a man and a woman. Those are just witnesses, and the truth of those witnesses would say, be passers-by. So everyone, when I met Francis, when I met Svava, when I met every single one who's in this room, and every one of the thousands and tens of thousands I seem to meet all over the world in all these countries, my message was, I'm calling you out of the world. My message was, don't settle for normal, Go for the atonement. In the Course in Miracles, Jesus says you have only one responsibility. He says it twice. The sole responsibility of the teacher of God and the sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for themselves. He's not saying you have worldly responsibilities. He's saying you have one responsibility is come back to your mind and accept the correction. And don't let anything or anyone or any images distract you from accepting this atonement. So this was important, I know, just to use Francis as an example, because when we would have our joinings and discussion, it was, it's not about Francis as a body leaving a husband or leaving a family behind, it's the mind leaving the family Constant. construct behind. It's the mind leaving the the political constructs behind. You know, can you be 
a fully awakened mind and even understand what politics mean? Can you even understand what family is? If you want to use the family construct, you don't actually leave anything behind. You start to realize in your mind is the family of God. Sometimes people would ask me, how is so-and-so? Have you seen them lately? What is so-and-so up to and everything? I say, oh, they're doing great. Uh, did you get an email? Did you get a phone call? No, they're doing great because they're in my mind. And my mind contains all minds. And my mind contains all people. Their mind is all-encompassing. It's a, it's a state of mind where you see that there is no world apart from mind. There are no people apart from mind. There are no lives apart from mind. That's why there's no suffering, is because there's only one mind. And that mind is still part of the mind of God. I am an idea in the mind of God. That is the answer to everything. Before Abraham was, I am is a beautiful teaching that, that the I am presence is one. There's only one Christ, and that Christ is an idea in the mind of God. And, and so that's the ultimate of caring, and yet to the world, to the ego, that is spooky, spooky, what did Einstein call it? Spooky action at a distance. <laughs> Even Einstein was frightened of that, that unity, of that light. That's why he, said, he called it spooky action at a distance. He, he started to realize everything of time and space was relative, but then he would tell his daughter and he would tell others, you know, whether you call it God or whether you call it intelligence, or whatever you want to call it, a, a scientific word for it. Uh, I mean, even, even the scientists, they have very strange words for unity, because it basically dispels all of Newtonian science. That's, that's why it's so frightening, because connectedness doesn't have parts. Or we could say that in forgiveness, you would see beyond the parts, you would see the love that is present, even with the appearance of parts. <laughs> you, like, be not deceived with the perception of fragmentation or the, the perception of parts. Love is truly all that there is. And, and how better than to demonstrate forgiveness by having a loving, honoring, respectful state of mind in relationship to what seems to be the world. But you can't do it, what Francis is saying, you can't, you can't do it by trying to define something inside the crystal ball. Otherwise, it's just another story. Francis left a husband. Francis left a family. Francis left a society. Francis left China. Yeah. Francis left Australia. To the ego, there are two options. Francis play the, the game, fulfill the family duty, or Francis avoid the duty, escaped, avoid. This is the two, uh, two explanations yeah. of the ego. ego. Yeah. You either avoid or you play the game. Yeah. And to the spirit, actually Jesus says, there is only one way. There is one way, only one way, he says in the same sentence. There is one way, only one way, to free yourself from the imprisonment of your own plan, which is follow a plan that is not of your making, period. Follow a plan that's not of your making. To free yourself from every single belief, from your, your false responsibility from either avoiding or playing the game, from all of it. Follow the plan that's not of your making. Yeah. And the ego doesn't really care which of those options right. that you, Francis leaves the family or Francis stays with the family, because either one, it's like, pick either one, you're guilty. <laughs> because it's, there are two options in time and space. It's like, it's like talk about a paradox. You're guilty if you stay, and you're guilty if you go. If you stay, oh, you play, you stayed in the role, and you stay in, tiny and small in that self-concept. People please. And you people please, yes, 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 honor thy father, mother, and yes, 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 yeah. honor thy partner, yes, 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 whatever you say, whatever you want, yes, yes, yes. 
or you go, you abandoner, you rejecter, you, you know, you're going to face the guilt because the question is not solved in time and space and stay and go. It must be that I've heard people say, oh I stayed and I felt guilty. And then they said, I left, I still felt guilty. So I tried to do it, I went back. <laughs> I still feel guilty. I was still guilty. Felt guilty. Then I left again. We actually know people in our community that have stayed and left <laughs> tens of times <laughs> trying to solve the guilt there. And then if you take the normal idea, be normal, well, what's a normal human being? Uh, a normal human being is one who feels guilty. Why? Because the guilt's in the mind, it's not in the form. And you can try the geographical escape, you can try the financial escape, you can try the, I gotta be me, I did it my way. <laughs> yes, there are times, I'm sure you knew, when I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up <laughs> and I spit it out. Yet through it all, I stood tall and did it my way. It's absolutely inescapable. There is no personal freedom. Jesus says, what do you want? Freedom of the body or freedom of the mind, for both you cannot have. He's telling us that there's a purpose in our mind called forgiveness that will set you free, that will really truly set you free. It will take you into your experience of who you are in the Kingdom of Heaven. And that's a purpose in the mind. It's not a purpose in form. The ego made up all these separate images and, and then it gave a purpose to every one of the separate images, as if there could be, purpose could be fragmented. And Jesus is like, no, no, purpose is unified, that's forgiveness. If, if you're listening to what we're sharing right now and you're saying, where does it say this in the Course? Can you give me one place where he talks about this? Actually, it's throughout the Course. It's all the way through the Course. But I'm going to give you a lesson to do today, for later on, on Sunday. It's called Homework, and read Lesson 184. If you doubt what, what Francis and I are sharing, and you just want to read one lesson and say, where in the Course does Jesus talk about what you're talking about right now, then you read Lesson 184 and watch your mouth drop open like, <laughs> oh my God, he's spelling it out. He actually spells it out all throughout the Course, but if you want to read one lesson, and if you still are not convinced with this lesson, 184, then you can go to Ken's favorite lesson and 128 will get you. If you can escape with your normal questions, be normal, be normal. If you want to be normal, read 184 and see how normal you can be in Lesson 184. And if you still feel you can be normal, then go to Ken's Lesson 128 and read that one. That'll knock the normal out of your mind. If that doesn't do it, Maybe you should watch The Matrix again. That'll knock the normal. The One, Neo accepting himself as the One beyond time and space, that's not normal. That's rare. That's rare. That's absolutely rare. How many people in the history of the United, of, of, of the world said before Abraham was, I am? Does that sound like a normal thing? Do you hear normal people saying, before Abraham was, I am? That was the eternal spirit speaking through a man 2,000 years ago, but that was not a man speaking. If you're dating a man, and the man says to you during the first date, in the, in the middle of eating the mashed potatoes, <laughs> before Abraham was, I am. Yeah, see what that does to the date, you know. See what that does to the date. That, that presence is not looking for a second date. <laughs> that presence could care less about a second date. But I'll tell you, that is, that's, talk about a showstopper, 
that that could bring that can bring the whole day to stillness. Before Abraham was, I am. Uh, could you elaborate on that? <laughs> I and the Father are one. Okay, date's over. I'm going to take my raspberry pie home and and eat that at home, and I'll contemplate that. But that is like a date stopper. I and the Father are one. Where do you go from that? You don't go anywhere. But that, that presence takes you into what is real and true. You might as well be saying, you know, you're talking about, you have a date going, you're having a date. What do you think about conspiracy theories? Well, the truth is true, and only the truth is true. That stops the date. There's no more opinions that follow that line. That's like Ken out on a date and he says, the truth is true and only the truth is true. Check please. <laughs> you know, that's it. That's it. You don't, you don't even get to dessert uh, on that one, you know. That's like right in the mirror. You just leave the meal. You leave the meal. And that's what Jesus is doing. He's actually calling us into the holy instant. He's not saying, you know, I want you to get a little intellectual grasp of A Course in Miracles so you can talk about it with other people. He doesn't want you to talk about it with other people. He wants you to have the experience of I amness and, and then do your Truman Show. In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. This isn't some kind of a betrayal scene. This isn't some kind of an abandonment scene. You know, when Jesus at the end, you think with the Apostles, Mary Magdala, Mother Mary all around, I am with you always, even unto the end of time. Poof! Gone. 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 They say in the Bible he went up into the clouds, but that's, I think he went more higher than that. <laughs> The body disappeared. The body disappeared. There was, there was no need for a body in I amness. There is no need for a body in I amness. So, what we're really saying here is don't play small. Don't think you're going to play human and just have an intellectual grasp of A Course in Miracles. What good does an intellectual grasp of A Course in Miracles inside of the crystal ball do you? Does that, does that bring you the experience of heaven? No! It doesn't bring you heaven. You want to be, come to a state of invulnerability where you start to realize suffering is impossible. Not suffering is optional. That's just a bunch of new age spiritual mumbo jumbo. Suffering is optional. Did Jesus ever say suffering is optional? At that presence of Christ was so strong that there was no suffering that could be within a, a cosmos or a galaxy of that presence. If they touched the hem of his garden, garment, then it was gone. The, the, it disappeared, you know. Suffering, can I touch your garment? Who touched me? You know, it's like, who touched my vastness, my love? Suffering and Christ don't go together. Christ and normality don't go together. <laughs> they, they, they are not compatible. <laughs> and yet, Jesus is saying, in your presence of who you really are, you will be radiating love and you are not going to be into the push or pull. You're not going to be into should I stay or go in form? What, what would that even mean to spirit? Hmm, should I stay or should I go? S saith the Lord. <laughs> Just put saith the Lord. No, no, put saith spirit after your statement. Should I be normal or not? Saith the spirit. No way. No way does spirit ask that question <laughs> because Spirit is allness. Spirit is everything. Spirit is vastness without an opposite. Way beyond the world of opposites. But as long as we're playing crystal ball, we're playing small. And then inside the crystal ball, is this, is this good? Is this not good? In the crystal ball there's ethics. In the crystal ball there's morality. 
not in spirit. Spirit is the vastness of allness that is all-encompassing, that has no opposite. But don't you know that ethics and morality both have opposites? Because why? They're trying to figure out behavior. Yeah. Is it good? Frances is contemplating leaving her husband and, oh, and leaving her family, leaving her country. Is that good or bad? Don't even think that you can solve it inside the crystal wall. Because the ego wants you to, you want to heal. Okay, good, good. As long as you stay in the crystal ball, you can do your Course in Miracles things. Yeah. But that takes you completely out. Completely yeah. out. Yeah. Ego says stay in some kind of a self-concept and practice with your book. And the ego doesn't even care if you just have a Course in Miracles self-concept. Like you're going to, I'm just going to be a human and who studies A Course in Miracles. But you can't graduate the Course <laughs> if you hold on to the self-concept, because the ego made the self-concept. So you can never graduate the Course. And so if you can't graduate the Course, then it must be you're ignoring this line in this book that says, you will believe this Course entirely or not at all. You're actually making an exception, saying, well, I'm, is it okay, Jesus, if I do the not, as all, not at all, but I become a good Course in Miracles teacher? He's like, what does that even mean? How can you be a good Course in Miracles teacher if you're not happy? If you're not eternally happy, and the Course is not saying, its Course is saying a Son of God is happy only in the environment in which he was created, which is Spirit. So, the Course is teaching that it's impossible to be happy as, a, as identified as a body. You see what that is? You can't be identified as the body and be eternal spirit. Because the body is very temporary, it's just a construct. construct it's make-believe and the eternal spirit is real, it's truth, it's divinity, it's oneness, it's love. So he's saying, bring the two together and you'll realize the illusion's not true and that you are eternal, you're an eternal being. But you can't be a temporary, time-based, crystal ball creature. You can't be a crystal creature and be the, the Holy Son of God. You can't be both. That's, that's what you're doing. You're just bringing them together and saying, one is real, perfect love, one is not. Cast out fear. That's the Bible. We're back to the Bible. If you just understood one line from the Bible, perfect love casts out fear, then that would be it. You wouldn't even need to read all the, the books and the Psalms and all the Old Testament, New Testament. You know, it's very complex if you think it's to be found in the words, but it's not. It's not in the words. <laughs>